Welcome back to Insta Vlogs. That's right, it's been a while <laughs> since uh, we've done this. Uh, what happens is that every so often we change things up and we anticipate to get back to things, but uh, the changes are such that uh, when they do come back, they're in a significantly changed format. What you may have noticed is that uh, uh, last we left Insta Vlogs, we were testing uh, uh, the uh, video ca capabilities of Android to do vlogging with and I found a good way of doing that so that's become the uh, BTS vlogs so the Android vlogs are now BTS vlogs and this has left uh, Insta vlogs with a new option to take a point where uh, I do a lot of research during the day uh, a lot of studying and as I said I want to go towards uh, developing documentaries that's where I'm heading right now is doing develop developing documentaries developing web series based on the research that I'm doing uh, out on the internet and wherever else I'm doing it, do, do my open exploration of the universe. So, um, I decided that InstaVlogs are going to become the research notes for this. Uh, I had initially, and I've put this out there for a playlist, said it, it, it's something from the research desk, uh, but if we do enough InstaVlogs, I don't think from the research desk is necessary. That seems that part of Big Bang Theory RL is not going to be necessary to have, to have from the research desk. Research desk because that's going to be done here uh, in the Insta vlogs. Insta vlogs are going to be one cut. They're not going to be censored at all. They're not going to be um, uh, spliced together. It's always going to be all the way from the start to the beginning. Uh, well, from the start to the <laughs> from the from the start to the end. Um, it's going to be one take, uh, leaving all the mistakes in. And one of the reasons why you do want to leave the mistakes in as a researcher is you want to go back and see how you've improved from the time before. And, and so what's happening is that, that Cyborg Alpha, as we move towards, uh, 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 towards uh, the launch of Physics TV, Cyborg Alpha TV is becoming behind the scenes. And not only becoming behind the scenes, but Cyborg Alpha TV is the researcher's notebook. It's a researcher's notebook. So you get to sort of see a, a lot of what's going on behind here. You get it's a lot of the way I approach things. Uh, and if you follow what I'm doing, you can sort of get an idea that uh, there's a lot of meandering, there's a lot of wandering around. And that's kind of part of the, the uh, random walk that I've been doing for a long time now. Uh, it produces this meandering. Uh, because there's no way to, no way to know where uh, your next bit of information is going to come from. And something may seem silly and insignificant, but as you start looking into it more and more and more and more, and building up a, a, a better understanding each time you go back into it again, uh, you can find new things and you can find ways to either fit it into what you're doing, or that there's some aspect of what you're doing, so the research you're doing, that maybe you when you initially thought it was insignificant, now that you go back and look at it, you find things, different bits and pieces of it that will actually help your research move forward. So, uh, the the outright dismissal of something as useless is no longer part of uh, my repertoire, hopefully. And, uh, and so I do go through things enough to see what I like and what I don't like, uh, and see whether or not, as, even if I'm fooling around, if there's something in what I'm doing in terms of fooling around that is useful to the research. And this is part of what you see as you, if you watch uh, my feed on uh, Cyborg Alpha TV. You can sort of watch the different, th the different videos and look at it. You can sort of see this. You can sort of, sort of see 
uh, what I'm looking at, um, one of the videos that I'm, I'm uh, spending, uh, spending my time with, and get an idea of what I might be doing with things. So that's kind of how you can sort of use these uh, Insta vlog. The uh, the, uh, the 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 Insta vlogs are going to uh, sort of be an expansion on the. Uh, uh, of the YouTube strolls as, as as my research notes. So I think they're gonna be about 15 minutes in length. I think that's a good uh, ballpark figure to put in there as as a uh, web series. Uh, I know 15 minutes is a little long, but this is not designed to be something that's uh, within the ordinary. This is designed to follow along the research. And one of the areas of research that I've, uh, I've been working on, and then we sort of led it up to, as we're, and this is what we're getting we're getting into, one of the areas that sort of popped out of this was a a new type of psychology called quantum psychology. Uh, we had looked at uh, Freudian psychology and uh, the uh, sort of the impact of Freudian psychology on society. And as you start looking around and start seeing what the impact of Freudian psychology has been, uh, you realize there's been a lot of failures. So, and, and the thing is, if you go back and you actually understand what Freudian psychology is, and I, I, I sort of sort of touched on this on uh, on uh, uh, a documentary series that I've been working on uh, right now, is sort of in mothballs, uh, and you can sort of find it if it's out there. It's uh, the Adventures in the Library. And I had been uh, looking at the term moron and going through the dictionary and through different encyclopedias uh, and defining these different things. And as I had stated before, that the psychology is a Greek word for psychologia. Uh, 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 and the psycho part, the psycho, and that's the way it's pronounced psycho, or it, you, 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 you can have the, just the as a psycho, or you can do the psycho. You can do either one. Either one is okay, as it's. Uh, as its pronunciation, and psycho, or psycho, is the soul. But what happens is, if you look at Freudian psychology and, and Freud himself, Freud was really the person who brought out atheism. In other words, that it was a concept that man was absent of the soul. And so what happens is that when you look at Freudian psychology, Freudian psychology itself is really pseudo-psychology because it, it, it self contradicts uh, the. Freudian psychology actually denies the existence of the soul. So if you don't have a soul, how do you do psychology? How do you study the soul? Right? This is this 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 is the contradiction, the sort of built-in, the inherent contradiction in Freudian psychology. As soon as you say the soul doesn't exist, you no longer have psychology because you know you're saying the soul, the psycho, if the psycho is false or non-existent. Then you have false or pseudo uh, psychologia, false soul study, and this uh, aspect of psychology, and even going into into psychiatry, this can be demonstrated. And this is where I talked about uh, the emergence of the chemical man and the failures of chemical man, and chemical society. Uh, that invariably both chemical man under psychiatry and uh, uh, animal man under uh, Freudian psychology or pseudo psychology, both produce pr both produce at the end of its uh, existence a psychopathic society, a society that is incapable of understanding right from wrong. In other words, it's without any form of moral guidance. And this is what we're seeing today. When it says, "Why are some of these things that are occurring that are today, that are, today are actually occurring?" Well, because society is fundamentally without a soul. It's without any form of moral direction. It's in uh, psych, uh, moral direction comes in form of social justice. It's whatever is socially acceptable. If murder is socially acceptable, murders of a particular human human group is socially acceptable because it's defined as no longer human. Then that's fine. That's not a problem. Uh, it's only a problem if something is uh, disapproved of by society. In other words, we've gone into a, 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 a psychology or a, a morality of consensus. If something is deemed by society, by, by a popular view to be okay, then it's okay. If something is deemed by society to be viewed as bad, then that's bad. And that's the limit of the psychology. This is what's being taught in schools. And this is what's being taught to a lot of kids. 
And the end result is, is that is that you have this sort of psychopathic behavior being uh, evolved in to take in today's society on a, on, on an increasingly uh, more prevalent, more uh, uh, more dominant scale, generation after generation. But the problem is, is that, and this is why I termed it psych quantum psychology, is that if you go into quantum physics and, and, and with the understanding of parallel universes and probability theory, uh, this opens the door once again for a scientific look into the spiritual universe as a parallel universe. And this way, in this way, we can sort of, uh, if we're talking about parallel universes, uh, and quantum, me quantum mechanics certainly does open the door to this. Same thing with dark energy on the large scale. Uh, dark energy, dark matter opens the door to this as well. That then we now have to consider maybe we can actually do uh, an observational study in sort of uh, the spiritual universe as a parallel universe. And this brings it back into a science again as an observational science and that, that can be formally studied. Uh, and since we're doing this, and, and, and we say, okay, well, okay, we have a parallel universe that's a spiritual universe. Well, what's the geometry? What's the mathematics of this? And the mathematics would be, uh, and I was sort of thinking about this for a while, this actually took me a couple months to think about, is that you would be dealing with the spiritual universe and the real universe as two separate universes. Uh, take the real universe as our real universe, that's a real number system here, and take the... Uh, uh, spiritual universe as an imaginary universe and then when you put the two together, when you interact the two together, when the two intersect and interact, then you have a complex plane. So in other words, uh, you would basically look at the, the uh, study of uh, this uh, spiritual universe in the form of studying a complex plane. Now where do we see this before? Do we have an analog for this? And the answer is yes, we do have an analog for this and this is the case of a black hole. Where we can't actually see the black hole itself, we can see the effect of the black hole on the surrounding environment and then determine its properties, not on, on what we see of the black hole, but, but what we see on the on the black hole's effect on the surrounding environment. In other words, we're not seeing the black hole and describing the black hole itself, we're seeing the effect of the black hole uh, uh, on the surrounding environment and, and sort of making a, uh, an observation on that. And we're going to remember that that's all we're doing is we're making an observation of it and sort of bit by bit incru uh, 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 increasing our understanding of what a black hole is. Now, this is uh, where this needs to be stated that our understanding is increasing, but it never reaches, and this is what I said before, uh, in the quantum universe, and this is why it's an anti logical universe, you can call the quantum universe an anti logical universe, is that. Knowledge is not absolute, it's asymptotic. That means you can only approach the absolute knowledge. You can never actually get it. And so all things that we look at and we study are all in the approximation. They're never the actual real thing. They're never actually the total thing. It's just in an approximation. And is it, well, can we describe this mathematically? And yes, we do have a description of an asymptotic universe, uh, an, asymptotic, an asymptotic reality, an asymptotic knowledge. Uh, described in mathematics, and that's the fundamentals of calculus. If you understand the fundamentals of the limit, and derivatives, and integrals, this is the mathematics of, uh, of asymptotic knowledge. So we have enough of the mathematics that we can go in and take a, 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 a good preliminary look at what's going on. But first we have to start writing down our observations, and that's what we'll be doing over the next year or so is looking at some of the observational work uh, that I've been doing over the years, looking at some of the sort of the, the sources that I'm putting together for this observational work uh, so that we can get a look, good look at quantum psychology. Now, quantum psychology is the real psychology. It's, it's viewing uh, the real universe and the spiritual universe uh, where it intersects as a complex plane. First we have to do our, uh, our, our uh, <coughs> excuse me, our observations. Once we do our observations, we have to look for patterns and designs. Once we look, once we see patterns and recurring, recurring, recurring patterns again, uh, that we have a a, a a means to design a uh, an approximate mathematical formula so that we can sort of get an idea of what's actually happening. 
if a mathematics is required. Because not what happens here is that mathematics, because we're in an anti anti logic universe, and mathematics is, is part of the logic universe, mathematics at some point in time will break down, and that there will be no mathematical description of what we see on the other side. Uh, and that's because mathematics is part of the real universe, it's part of the logical universe, and once you move into the anti-logical universe, uh, at the point where the anti-logical universe begins and the logical universe breaks down, that's the dividing point, that's the, that's the division line, that's the boundaries where mathematics ends and a new form of mathematics based on the anti-logical universe has to begin, but that hasn't been developed at all. There's nothing out there for the anti-logical universe in terms of mathematics. That is something completely new, completely different. So, that's where we're going with this. Uh, next few uh, episodes, we'll be getting deeper into this, getting deeper into the quantum psychology, uh, looking at different op uh, options and, uh, uh, and uh, observations. Anyways, that's it for... Uh, Insta vlogs for today. Uh, I'll probably doing two, probably doing Insta vlogs two or three times a week, maybe more. Uh, this stuff is all going to be on demand, 720p, so that you can see this on. If you're watching YouTube on your TV, it can be done in full screen, so not a problem uh, for big screen or big or large format TVs. This is 720p uh, 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 shot, so the shot is 720p. It's in high def, so. We're not going to be doing, as I said, we're not going to be doing uh, 1080p anytime soon. Maybe two years out we'll be doing 1080p. Because right now, the way uh, the, the major ISPs are throttling uh, uh, throttling the internet, uh, right now the best uh, format that you can use in terms of streaming without getting any jitters or anything like that, that's 720p. I tried 1080p. There is too many jitters on 1080p to, to get a full good stream out of it. At uh, least too much buffering. Uh, this is because of the internet throttling. So right now the best option is 720p, and that's where we're at right now. As soon as we see that there's enough, you know, that probably two years from now, that there is enough bandwidth out there that the ISPs have sort of woken up and stopped throttling and makes room for 1080p, then we'll do that. Um, anyways, that's it for today. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Professor of what? Professor of Physics.